Um, this partnership started about a month back, uh, a little more than a month back. Uh, a friend of mine said, if, if you're interested uh, to look into Starlink. So we met with Starlink. We met Chris and some of the other executives of Starlink. We had a very good conversation of, of uh, and also had a some sort of a meet and greet. And we told them who Arden was and what we do, how long we've been in the industry, what we do for the industry, and what type of business we're into. And that kind of started everything. So uh, we we explored further. And then eventually, we both decided, starting in Arden, to, in terms of partnership, look into a tier one uh, type of partnership or resellership. Starlink is uh, is different from the, any other products that we carry. Uh, and Starlink is very simple. So they have uh, uh, the residential consumer, and then there's the commercial B2B. For B2B, there's two types. One is, would be the fix. The fix uh, Starlink um, kit, and then there's the mobile kit, so which is meant for boats, or anything that's moving, uh, trucks, uh, um, uh, and say you're, you have um, for military use, you know, coast guards and things like that. So this, this, that's the mobile kit. And then for the fix, this is where uh, businesses can uh, avail of this kit and um, also uh, the subscription model. Unlike the residential where there's already a fixed Pricing. We can go to the Starlink website. You can actually look at the the, the pricing. But for the B two B, we're still working it out with uh, Starlink because again, come January twenty twenty five, there'll be a different B two B pricing model. So we're we're holding off onto it, and we're going to announce it come January. We can work with banks. Uh, we can work with the government LGUs. Uh, for example, uh, first responders, OCD, or barangays, uh, uh, cities who would want to have, let's say, provide access to their constituents in terms of uh, Wi-Fi, things like that. And we can work with enterprise customers as well. Of course, we will work with our partners as our agents uh, to go to these businesses and enterprise customers. Philippines is the perfect market for starting because one, we have 70%, of course, this is uh, based on um, uh, numbers, the data that we have coming from the connectivity, which is available in the Philippines, 70% unserved. So you're, you're talking about millions and millions of people who are still not able to get reliable, uh, fast internet, or even zero uh, connectivity at all, right? So I think that's number one. Number two is that, our country is a, an archipelago with thousands of islands. So having a wired connection in terms of connectivity is very difficult. Probably that's the reason why a lot of our telco friends are still having a difficult time trying to serve the areas, the remote areas, right? If you would look at how the technology of starting is, so versus the traditional satellite, it's totally different. So Starlink is a low orbit um, uh, satellite. And it's not just one satellite. And from what I know, and uh, uh, which I was told, Starlink launches, I think every three weeks or three times a week, something like that. Uh, and they launch these satellites to cover the, uh, the, the globe. Right? So the way the satellite feed works for Starlink is that the, the satellites move and you are, so unlike if there's only one satellite and there's line of sight, uh, you're always looking at that satellite, that single satellite. In Starlink, there are thousands or hundreds of satellites going around. And every, so every every angle that you will see or every time, there's going to be one satellite, two satellites covering the area. So, it, it, so it's like um, our space is covered with small satellites. So the experience in Zamboanga and the experience in Manila, the experience in in far north or far south would be the same because of the coverage of these hundreds of satellites hovering over the Philippines. So there's the, connect, the connection connectivity would remain the same. Um, speed and reliability would remain the same. So Arden has been in the industry for 14 years as 
an ICT distribution company. Uh, and we are part of the Lamco Group, which is one of the longest uh, ICT distributor in the Philippines, more than 40 years. So we are relying on that experience and wealth of knowledge in terms of distribution. We have been distributing ICT products across the Philippines, uh, from Luzon to Vismin. We do have an office in, in Cebu to cover the Vismin area. And that experience helps us you know, to cover the market and also make sure that we are able to, to answer uh, the questions that uh, some of our partners, even the users would have in terms of support, training, coverage, and most especially logistics. I think that would be the main challenge for a lot of partners because again, we are, we're a country of islands. Of course, we need to really make sure that our support structure is there. So from customer service, uh, hotline numbers, pre-sales, we need to be able to install, you know, and educate and train the people who are going to use it because if you're if the devices or the kits are in the remote areas, it's very difficult for us to support them like in 24 hours or real time. So there should be some mechanism wherein they can get support um, remotely and, and uh, be able to solve the issues that they're they're facing uh, and get answers from us. You know? uh, so you know, those are the things that we really need to work on and make sure that we have it in place. I don't think it will. There's there's going to be the there's going to be a place where Starlink, the technology of Starlink will have its own market. Right. The traditional telcos will have its own market um, based on the demand of the customers. If you look at uh, traditional telcos, the cable and the fiber, these are high bandwidth, you know, uh, requirements, which Starlink might not be able to cater to. The advantage of Starling is that it's not wired. So anytime you will have connectivity, but again, you're limited to the bandwidth, that the maximum bandwidth that, let's say, uh, a satellite and the, the, the kit can offer you. Um, there will be requirements for data centers that you cannot use Starling as a device, but it has to be a wired connectivity. So these two would coexist, and probably some of the telcos would, would work with Starling. I'm I'm seeing that there's there's going to be some collaboration because um, if if we're talking about service level agreement and you're working with the likes of our friends in PLDT, Globe, Converge, and the rest, you know they they will have customers in areas that they may need Starlink to fulfill the the last mile. So there's going to be collaboration and there's going to be a a very good uh, uh, market wherein both can coexist. Yeah.